You're traveling to another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Word from the Lord. James over here with you, and I'm so glad you are, are tuned in with us for a continuation of our studies. As we, as we said last week, we're going to continue some of the thoughts that we have um, been uh, uh, discussing the last couple of weeks on our moral uh, decay of this, uh, of this country, and uh, I think tonight we're going to sum up the reason why we're in the situation we are. Uh, but before we get into that, we want to uh, give you our contact information. Uh, a word from the Lord at gmail.com is where you can reach me, uh, 276-340-2653. If you're in the uh, Eden area, we meet at 250 the Boulevard. And uh, we meet on Sundays at 9 and 10 a.m. and Thursdays at 7 p.m. And so we hope that you will uh, come out and, and visit with us and uh, study God's Word with us. We'll be glad to see you, glad, glad for you to come out and, of course, uh, I think Mark gave the information also for uh, H23 Starting Avenue in Martinsville, 120 American Legion in Danville. Uh, these are all places where you can study God's Word and uh, find in individuals who are willing to give you a Bible answer for uh, for anything that we say and do. And so uh, I, you know, I think it is it is uh, evident that we are the people that you should go to when you have a Bible question. I mean, we're the only, we're the ones that are opening up the phone lines and and uh, saying we'll give you uh, what does the Bible say and a word from the Lord. These are the things that we are striving to do so that you can know for sure that what you're getting is the word of God. You know, Paul said uh, to know of, of a surety of whom you've been taught or what you've been taught. And so that's really what we're talking about, knowing for sure that what you've gotten is indeed a message from God, from His Word. And so we hope that you will certainly uh, uh, avail yourself of these opportunities. One good opportunity to come out and study God's Word is going to be the tent meeting, September 14th. <clears throat> That's coming up in just a little over a week, uh, September 14th at the Eden Fairgrounds. I think everybody knows where the Eden Fairgrounds are. This is the first time we've had our, our, we're going to have our tent set up there. So it's kind of a new location. We've been in Eden several times uh, in the past, but but uh, September 14th through the 25th, you can come out at the Eden Fairgrounds and uh, uh, study God's Word with us. We never take up, never take up a collection. A fellow asked me the other day. He said, "Well, how, how do y'all do this? You know, if y'all don't take up any money, how do how do y'all fund it?" And I said, "Well, the way the Bible says to fund it, lay by and store on the first day of the week, First uh, Corinthians 16, one and two. Uh, every man giving as you've been prospered and as cheerfully." Uh, as, as we're giving, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. So that's how we fund these things. We're, we're simply doing what the Bible says. So if we're doing what the Bible says, then you can assure, be assured that what we give you is what the Bible says. And so we try to practice everything that, uh, that we're saying and doing. We, you'll find that we're practicing what we preach in these, in these areas. So uh, come on and examine us. You know, it, it, it won't, uh, won't cost you anything. But maybe just a little bit of your time, and I think you'll enjoy it. If you're looking for someone to study God's Word with or someplace where you can get God's Word, we, uh, we certainly want to invite you out to the tent. As a matter of fact, uh, we'll have the scriptures up on the screen, the message up on the screen. Everything that we uh, say or do, we'll give you Bible answers for that. So we hope that you will come out September 14th through the 25th and get some Bible answers to your Bible questions. So... Uh, um, now, as we said, we're going to uh, continue a, a thought that we have been uh, discussing for the past couple of weeks. The idea that this country is in a moral decay. I think if you look around, anybody that's, that has uh, eyes that are opened can see that we're in pretty, pretty dire straits as far as our country is going. More and more people are becoming uh, uh, more uh, unconcerned about their fellow man. I think there is a, a, a growing uh, uh, tension amongst uh, uh, citizens of this country, uh, not trusting into individuals. The idea that you know we're, there's there's a, a fear that's kind of crept back in us. We don't associate with each other like we like we uh, used to. Uh, people are not as uh, as cordial as they used to be. You might say, and I think it's because of this one thing that we've been discussing. Now, let me just kind of recap some of the things that we have, we have looked at. We're talking about the decline in our moral fiber and the, and the direction in which we're going. 
And I believe it is because we are not willing to really face the problem that, uh, uh, that is the cause of it. You know, oftentimes we like to treat the symptoms, uh, in our, whether it be uh, physically or, or socially, whatever. We don't really like to, we don't really like to uh, uh, treat the problem itself. We kind of like to treat the symptoms and instead of getting down to the root of the problem. You know, someone said it's, it's sort of like if you've got a, a pain in your body, you take an aspirin for it, and that eases the pain. Well, that really hasn't stopped the problem necessarily. You know, if you've got, if you've got a bad knee and your, your knee's rubbing and your cartilage is gone in your knee and there's a lot of pain, so you take medicine for that, that hasn't fixed the problem in your knee. It's just dulled the pain. And so really what we're, what we're doing in our society is we've kind of, we've kind of just... Uh, uh, being content to try and uh, doctor, if you will, doctor the, uh, the symptoms rather than try to just go back and get to the root of the problem and, and uh, uh, talk, about, uh, talk about what the, the real issue is and address that. You know, Solomon had, had a saying here, and it's in Ecclesiastes. I'm going to try to find it right here. Uh, Ecclesiastes uh, is it 7? Let me see here. Ecclesiastes 7, 12. Ecclesiastes 7, 12. Solomon said, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. All right? Ecclesiastes 7, 12. But uh, the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Money is a defense. That's what people think. They think, well, you know, we'll just throw a little money at it. And uh, that'll be the answer to it. Uh, well, money money is not always the uh, uh, the answer. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think he said in another place, money is an answer. Let me see if I can find that one. Uh, but we, in our in our society, that's what we do. We try to we try to uh, look at at the problems. Yeah, Ecclesiastes ten nineteen. Uh, Solomon said this. He said, uh, "A feast is made for laughter, but wine and wine maketh merry. But money answereth all things." And that's really what where we are in our society. We think that if we throw enough money at a problem, then it'll be cured. If we just throw enough money at the symptoms, then the problem will go away. But really, friends, what we're doing is we're just pushing a problem on down the road. And so, when our society now is breaking down morally. And we've given a number of, of instances in which that, that's taking place. It has to be ultimately because we're getting away from biblical principles. That the foundation of society is based upon and rooted upon doing what God says. God is the, is the God of all nations. And friends, we, have to, we, have, we need to understand that if we don't look at our lives under the big picture of God is over all nations, then we're going to always find ourselves in a bind. You know, it's one thing to say I, I'm a patriot and I, I love my country, and another thing to say that uh, a country is the best country and everyone else is terrible. Well, there are some better countries than other countries, but ultimately God is in charge of them all. And when a nation starts getting away from God's principles, then the the great judge of us all, the ruler of all nations, is then going to come and execute judgment upon that nation. And so the only thing that's really preventing this nation from uh, a total collapse is getting back to biblical principles that will preserve us from God's judgment. Now, I'm not trying to be a doomsayer, you know, or do, a prophet of doom, or uh, one of these guys that says, you know, uh, the, the end is coming. I think Pat Robertson said the end is coming in... Uh, I can't remember how many days it was, but uh, I, I want to say it was like 21 days, uh, which is, you know, that'd be about the end of our tent meeting. So, you know, I, I don't know. I need to, need to check on that. That might be a good uh, tent promo. But, uh, but none, nonetheless, friends, what we need to realize is when we get away from biblical principles, a nation will go under. It, it's, it's just bound to fall. It's, it's bound to uh, uh, collapse because we have gotten away from these biblical principles uh, uh, principles. Uh, Psalm 9 verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. Friends, that's not just uh, some third world nation. 
That's not some European nation. That's not some African nation or some uh, uh, nation in a, in a far country that we don't know, know anything about. That's any nation, all right? Any nation that forgets God will be turned into hell if we get away from these biblical principles. And so the problem is, the problem is that we've moved further and further away from these principles. And, uh, and this is why we're in, in the shape we're in. Now, these are the, the ones that we pointed out. And if you notice, they're all um, uh, uh, what, uh, 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 alliterated here. You got the collapse of marriage. You got the corruption of manners, the, a culture of moochers and uh, a, 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 a desire to consent to murder. That is, we're, we're fine with, with killing people. And so when these things, and it's just four of them, I mean, there's, there's some others I, I had intended to maybe put up the idea of we've, uh, 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 crime is magnified, we glorify uh, criminals, and uh, we could talk about that for just a minute, just the idea that, you know, uh, uh, these uh, serial killers and, and uh, uh, terrorists and whatever, instead of putting the wickedness away from our society, we put them in jail, and then they get to interact. They, you know, they're still in the news. I mean, oh, uh, Charles Manson is still out there in California, and every so often, you know, uh, some of the, the girls that committed all the murders, they, they uh, come back up for parole, and they're back in the news and everything, and it's like, you know what? They should have been killed and put out of society a long time ago, <clears throat> and we would have done forgot them. They might be a little footnote in, in a history book. But instead, we get to relive it all the time because we don't put away the murder, put away the evil. And so crime is magnified, and that, that's really what we are. So when you talk about the collapse of marriage, corruption of manners, the, this idea that we've uh, created a whole culture of moochers that people just want, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, and this idea that, you know, murder is okay, the, the sanctity of life is, is so frail anymore. There is a problem, the root of all these problems. And friends, I'm going to give you another alliterated point here that, that will sum up why our country is, is broken, why our moral compass is broken. It's really that the moral compass is not so broken as much as it is we've gotten away from it. But I'm going to say the, the bottom line of why we're in the, the shape we are, friends, is because, now watch this, the collapse of marriage, right? The collapse of marriage, the corruption of manners, a culture of moochers, and a consenting to murder all comes down to this one thing, and that is churches of men. And you say, oh, James, that's a far fetch. Y'all just always talking about the denomination. Y'all just always ragging on them and running them down. And, and so you just had to bring that, you know, it's kind of like the, the, the old preacher that always comes around to the same point. Friends, you may think this is the same old story, but you know what? This is the truth. It all comes down to churches of men. It all comes down to the idea, the people that are standing in a position to give people the biblical principles that will uphold a nation when they get away from them and they're already away from them because they're the church of men to start with. But when they even get more and more away from them, that means the society's going to go away from them. I mean, there's no saying that is if Satan can get the pulpit, he'll eventually get the pew. And that's exactly true. And if he gets the pew, then he actually gets society. If he can get the pew, then he can get the public. He can get, he can get everybody. And so the church of men are the problem. You know, the church of men are the problem. And the reason why we've gotten away from, these, from God's principles is because men come along and they move men. They move the, the masses away from biblical teachings and biblical principles that will uphold society. I mean, where else are you going to get them? Where, where do you think people get their idea of what God would want, uh, how God would want a society to be? Where do they get that? People who believe in God and who believe in the Bible, who believe that there is a, a, a good and, and, and wholesome way of life, where do they get these principles? Where do they get this idea? It has to be from the realm of quote-unquote religion. But notice this, friends, just as we've always said, when you start deviating from the principle in one area, pretty soon you're going to be off in other areas too. And so what we've, what we've done is we've... We're demonstrating that church of men are the culprit. They're the problems. Because eventually they stop, stop caring uh, even more 
than they already have about God's principles to the point that men will then don't care anything about it at all. Now, Paul said it this way. In 2 Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 4, here's what he tells Timothy. He says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall be and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. Now, why is it that you think that we as a society can turn away from sound doctrine and turn our ears to fables and have our ears tickled, you know, have our ears hear what we want to hear and still be okay with what God says? See, there's a direct correlation. The people who are turning the people away from sound doctrine by default, must be turning them to fables and thus unsound doctrine. And when you get to unsound doctrine, then you have a society that has moved away or has moved away from God's principles. See how that relates? So if a, if a church, and I'll use that term loosely, if a, if a religious group is adhering to God's principles in a, in a very strict way or close way, then they're going to be very careful about how they live. And thus, the society in which they live and the society in which they influence will start to imitate and emulate God's principles. There won't be the culture of moochers. There won't be the people that are saying, oh, yeah, we'll just give you handouts, handouts, and you're okay just mooching off society. We, we've shown you those principles. There won't be a culture of, of people saying, well, yeah, we don't really care about life. Because the people who are close to the Bible, they're going to say, no, we appreciate life. We love life. We, we understand the sanctity of life. The, the innocent blood is, is something that's precious in God's sight. We're not going to shed that. You see that? And so a society that's close to God's word is going to uh, 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 be a society that is, uh, uh, has cultivates manners, that shows love and compassion for their fellow man. You know, that's caring and concerning not like what we're seeing today. And so you have to say, well, where are people getting this idea that these lifestyles and these manner of lives that, that, uh, that we're living, where is it, how, how's it okay? They have to be getting it from somewhere. Or they have to be getting the idea because nothing contrary is being taught. And so it must, by default, be coming from these churches of men who have already deviated, who have already gone away from sound Bible, uh, Bible teaching. They've already gotten away from, from, from the Bible in some small way, and that will ultimately lead to getting away in other areas. So let's look at this. Let's just take, for example, here. Let's just take the church of men and their uh, contribution to the collapse of marriage. Now, I know we've talked about this in time past, but notice this. The church of men don't really care about what God said on marriage. They, uh, they care a little bit. You know, they, they care some because they like to talk a good talk when it comes to the homosexual. You know, and so, oh, you know, we can't have that. But notice this. They have gotten away from what God said on marriage and thus they have contributed to the decline. You know, I, I think it's very interesting and I... I started to use what Mark was talking about, this lady in Kentucky, this, uh, 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 what was she, a, a city clerk or county clerk uh, that, that was not going to issue these uh, lot marriage licenses. And here she has been married how many times and how many kids out of wedlock. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we're not going to let the homosexuals come in and ruin marriage for all of us fornicators out there. You know, we, we just can't have, we can't have these sodomites out here uh, running the, the, the sacred institution of marriage for all of us who'd like to sleep around with, with several men and have children with uh, 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 several women out of wedlock, you know. See what we're talking about? It's kind of like we don't want people who are dirty in the swimming pool where we're all 
you know, already bathing in filth. Did that make any sense? And so the church of men have already contributed to the decline. And yet they say, well, we need to rethink marriage or we're going to run people off. You know, Jerry Falwell, and I, I, I didn't pull this quote up, but I know we've, we've showed it in time past. Uh, Jerry Falwell, the late Jerry Falwell, who re recognizes he's wrong now, uh, said that we have to rethink with, with nearly half of marriages in America ending in divorce, we need to rethink and restudy our position on marriage and divorce. Well, why did he say that? Because if you make a firm stand on what God says about marriage and divorce, then guess what? You're going to have people mad at you. Well, you don't have a very big church. You don't have a very big church if you don't appeal to, uh, and, and please some people and tickle their ears. That's what the guy that called in, uh, that called to Mark said. You know, well, how many people you got over there? What difference does it make how many we got? Is, is numbers, are numbers the, the, uh, 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 the prerequisite? Is it, does that determine how, how great you are, how faithful you are to the Lord? If that's the case, then, then uh, the Catholics have us all beat, right? We need to become a Catholic. See how silly that is? For people to say, well, y'all y'all think y'all the only ones right. Well, the only alternative is we're wrong and everybody else is right. Is that going to be the case? Are you going to buy that? And so these churches of men have gotten away from what God says because they don't want to run people off. And so how many people, you, you just think about this, friends. How many people in the church where you go, where, church where you attend, how many of them have been married and divorced several times and maybe you don't even know how many times they've been married and divorced or why? And it's not so much have they been married and divorced, but why have they been married and divorced? See, here's what, here's what God says on the matter. Here's what God says on the matter. Matthew 19 uh, and verse 6. Jesus said, Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Well, man comes along and says, Well, you can put asunder because she burnt a tote or she didn't wash your clothes right, or you can put him away because, you know, he's a slob and he lays on the couch or whatever. You can put him away for whatever reason. Man comes along and says, That's okay. And thus they're already ruining what God says marriage should be. And the only exception that God has given is in, in verse 9. He said, I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife and shall marry another committeth adultery, except it be for fornication. And whoso marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. Now, friends, why is it that all of a sudden man comes along and wants to make a stand on homosexuals when they won't make a stand on this? Now, can you see how the churches of men have contributed to the collapse of marriage and therefore have contributed to the fall and decline of society? And then, it, once you open that door, friend, once you open that door, it's not a far step to let the homosexuals in. And so here they are. Here they are. The uh, South Carolina Baptist Church uh, begins ordaining gay and transgender ministers. And, and was, oh, I just can't believe it. What is the world coming to? Well, it was coming to this a long time ago when you didn't make a stand on marriage and divorce. When you, when you didn't insist that people take marriage seriously and when they join in marriage, that should be a lifelong commitment. See that? You, you're contributing to it. Here's another headline. Presbyterian Church, USA, embraces LGBT inclusive definition of marriage. Yeah, we're going to redefine marriage here. And, and the Episcopalian Church, because we don't want to stick to God's definition of marriage, we're going to use the LGBT definition of marriage. Well, you're contributing to the decline. We pointed out that how Marriage is the bedrock of society. The past couple of shows, we pointed out how marriage 
is, is a fundamental uh, key to uh, society. And when people divorce and children are raised in single-parent homes, the, the, the society starts unraveling. And then you add homosexual to that, and it's even worse. Here's, here's another headline. Here's, this is the, um, the Episcopalian church. All right, so we've got the, the, some Baptist churches, uh, I guess probably the more independents, or maybe they're with their, they're the, uh, uh, not the Southern Baptist Convention, but the, uh, uh, I can't remember what, what the other one's called, but um, uh, here's the Episcopalian Church and the Presbyterian Church. The Episcopalian, Episcopalian website says the LGBT in church. That sounds like something you order at the, at the sandwich shop, you know, uh, I don't know. BTL or TBL or whatever it is, bacon, lettuce, tomato. I don't know what what they're saying. But notice, here's what the, uh, uh, let's see if I can read this for you, because I apologize, it's kind of small. But I want you to notice what they say or how they how they welcome these uh, homosexuals and lesbians in as if God wants them in all, all, anyway. It says, along the way, the Episcopal Church has garnered a lot of attention, but with the help of organizations such as Integrity USA, the church has continued to, uh, its work toward full inclusion of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Episcopalians. In 2003, the first openly gay bishop was consecrated. In 2009, General Convention resolved that God's call is open to all. And in 2012, a provisional right of blessing for same gender relationships was authorized and discrimination against transgender persons in the ordination process was officially prohibited. To our lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender brothers and sisters, the Episcopal Church welcomes you. Well, the Episcopal Church may welcome you, but the Lord's Church does not welcome you living in sin. And see, the problem that churches of men have created is because they bought into this idea that, well, if you love someone, you just let them do their own thing. Or we can't tell someone they're wrong because it's not politically correct. And we've been, we've been uh, dumbed down or we have been kowtowed into not saying anything is wrong to the point that you have to allow the, whatever's wrong is in. Well, friends, that's where the churches of men have, have contributed to the decline of our society. See? And so uh, it, it, it just, it ought to be evident. It ought to be evident that the ones who are telling, who should be saying, this is morally right and morally wrong, when they, stop, when they start blurring the line, or they say, well, we can't say anything's wrong, well, then everything is going to be right. I'm going to play you this video from uh, Jimmy Carter, Baptist Sunday school teacher in Plains, Georgia. I uh, found it very interesting, the, the uh, uh, things he was saying. But listen to what he says. He's going to talk about abortion and homosexuality in this clip, but I just, we'll just go ahead and listen to some of it. Listen to what he says here. And I was struck, even as I'm talking to you now, about how much faith has resonated for you. When you were first dissatisfied with politics, you went back to your faith. You went on uh, sort of missions, almost. I did, um, I'm on missions. You talk about being reared in the kind of AME church tradition. I was. Um, how important is faith to, was faith to you throughout your career, and how much is it uh, sort of important to you now? Well, it's always been important in my life. You know, I'm a born-again Christian, so-called. I'm, I'm a Baptist. Uh, I taught Sunday school. So-called Christian, Baptist. Well, he got that right. Friends, Baptists are not Christian. See, see that? Even by their name, they're admitting they've moved away from the Bible. Oh, I digress. Let's listen. The day before yesterday, I'll be teaching again next Sunday. I teach every Sunday that I'm home in Plains. In a tiny church, we have about 30 regular members, and we have sometimes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred visitors who come wow. to see the curiosity of a politician teaching the teaching Bible. Bible yeah. <laughs> and, and so I'm, I'm deeply involved in our church, and, I, and, I, and my faith has been a kind of the foundation of my encouragement when I was, when I was uh, in trouble or failed on something, and, 
and given me a new ab ab opportunity or motivation to reach for greater things in my own life. Uh, and I think that it's, uh, I never have run across any really serious conflicts between my political obligations and my religious faith. How about gay marriage? Uh, that's no problem with me. You know, the only, I think uh, everybody should have a right to get married uh, regardless of their sex. And uh, the only thing I would draw a line on, I, I wouldn't be in favor of the government being able to force a local church congregation to perform gay marriages if they didn't want to. Right. But, but the, those two partners should be able to go to the local courthouse or to a different church and get married. That's no problem. Okay, so he didn't have, he, he, it's not a problem with him. You know, it doesn't hurt anybody, he says. It doesn't hurt anybody. It hurts society, President Carter. It hurts society. But because you are satisfied to say, well, I'm not even, I'm not really close to the Bible when it comes to being in, in, the, in the right church, see, then it's not a very far step to move away and say, you know what, I'm not going to do what God says on uh, teaching and marriage. It's, it's, not, it's not a problem. Now, he says, um, he's asked a question again later on to, uh, I'm going to see if I can skip toward that. I believe he would. I believe Jesus would. I don't know how, how when I was in. Would Jesus approve gay marriage? Went along with that, but, but that's been the only case. Now listen to what he says here. Would Jesus approve gay marriage? So when I was would in, Jesus approve gay marriage? I, I believe I believe he would. I believe Jesus would. I don't know how to, I don't have any verse in scripture. No, no, no. But I just uh, intuitively, yeah. No, I, 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 I believe that, that Jesus would approve gay marriage, but I'm not. That's just my own personal belief. Yes. Yeah. All right. I believe Jesus would approve gay marriage. I don't have a scripture for it. You better believe you don't have a scripture for it. But oh, but you teach Bible class. See what we're talking about, friends. The churches of men come up and espouse stuff and say, well, I don't have a scripture for it, but I just think I feel I believe, and therefore it must be right. Let's let the homosexuals in. Let's let the homosexuals, let's, let's continue this downward uh, decay of society because we don't really care about what God says. Now, friends, I think even a blind man can see that. That's a problem. That's a problem. And the churches of men... The churches of men are uh, some of the biggest uh, contributors to this decline. So we've, we've, got, we've got these churches of men that are contributing to the collapse of marriage. And men like Jimmy Carter, you know, wants to talk about his great faith, but yet he's willing to compromise his great faith when it comes to things like marriage. The sanctity of it. Well, let's look at this. What about this? Let's move on. What about the churches of men and the, and the uh, cultivating of these co uh, coarse manners? See, friends, this is what we're talking about. The churches of men should be, say, if they're, if they're so uh, close to God as they claim, and they're such following God's principles as they claim, they should be setting the standard for, for manners and morals and ethics. But you know what? Some of, the, some of the most vile language that I've heard has come out of so-called Christians' mouths. Some of the, some of the uh, worst behavior that I've witnessed or been on the receiving end of has, has, has come at the hands of the so-called Christians in these churches of men. Now, friends, what would you think if you were walking down the street and someone would just, you know, you asked someone a question and they just started yelling at you and wanted to lay hands on you and threaten you and things like that? You'd think, man, this, this guy must be, you know, out of his mind. But here's where we are. Here's where we are. This is uh, Riverview Baptist Church. This is uh, 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 Pastor Andrews. I say pastors like this, air quotes. He was told he told uh, Micah to come back and ask his question later, so Micah came back. We able to ask questions now? Those, uh, 
I've told you once to get out of our property. Now I'm going to call the cops and get you off of my property. Well, you actually said Wednesday evening that we could come yes, back sir. and ask questions on Sunday Bible See, class. I'll let you go. So is this how a servant of the Lord is supposed to act, sir? You can call it what you want to, but if you don't get off our properties, I will have you arrested. That's my last warning. Are you really going to act like this in front of your members, sir? All right, sir. I'll go call the police right there. If you show back up again, you will be dismissed. You can leave one or two ways. You can leave peacefully, or you can leave by the cops. Is that simple? All right. Don't come back on this property again. None of you. All right, I'll just calling to see if you're going to change your ways with the way you're acting. That's but... fine. You let me be the worry about ways. You worry about your ways. Okay. Get off the property. And if I see you on here again, I promise you, the police will be called and we will have a dispute. You do not come into a service and mess up a religious thing. Whether you believe the way I believe or not, I don't care. Videotape me. I run the devil out of our church. So get out. Don't come on this property again. Understand me. All right, well, as I, leave, right. as I leave, I hope you read 2 Timothy 2.24. I hope you read too, son. You worry about your own problems. You get out of my business. Now, was that, was that Christ-like behavior? Was that, was that really? Was that really a Christian attitude? I mean, really? Come back. Come back and ask questions. And then when you come back, we'll run you off. Really? You see what I'm talking about, friends? Now, I know you've heard me tell this story before about Larry Serber, the atheist, and how he, he, was, he was the nicest and most courteous person I've ever met as far as having a religious discussion. Yet these churches of men, you know, the so-called Christians, what, what happened to, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself? What happened to seek the lost? What happened to, you know, uh, uh, be meek to all men? Michael quoted second, or cited 2 Timothy 2, 20 to him. You know, the servant of the Lord is meek, gentle, patient. What, what, what is that? And so, I, I, that's what I'm saying. Is it any wonder, is it any wonder that the behavior or the attitude of society is any different than uh, it is when what they see or the... Or the uh, 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 the, the example that set before them, set, be, uh, set before people, are the preachers behaving like this? Pre preachers behaving badly? Now, I'm, I've got this muted because there's uh, just a lot of walking and not much talking. But I just want you to ask yourself, is this the example that we should see? Now, friends, my Bible says, and while we're waiting on that to come up, or waiting to get there, my Bible says, to be uh, an example of the believers. Sorry. Mistyped that. Let no man despise thy youth, but be an example of the believers. Is that is that really where we are? Was that, was that an example of the believers? All right, here's two brethren going into Spray Baptist mm -hmm. Church. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy. All right. Is the preacher in? One of the members, one of the members door knocking, and they said, "Go ask the preacher a question. He'll answer it." Here he comes. I'm not going to ask you to leave right now. Why? Leave no, leave the church. No. So, so you're still going to be a coward? No, you leave the church. We'll call the police on you for harassment. Harassment? Leave right now. What's harassment? I'm going. Get yourself out the door. I'm going. Both of you hey, there. don't push me. You get out the door. We're going. We're just over here because one of your members yeah. wants, to, wants you yeah. to come to the tent. I want you to get out the door. Yeah. Don't get put out. your hands on me, sir. You get out of here now. We're Don't going. Come back okay. Here. We're leaving. Wow. He shoved me. All right. Now, again, friends, we're talking about manners. 
you know, example of the believers? Is it any wonder why our society is just full of people who are uh, caustic and, you know, vulgar and, uh, 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 you know, ill-mannered? You, you expect that when you go to the store, you know, maybe. But maybe the reason why they're like, maybe that grumpy person that you meet at the store, or that grumpy person you meet in traffic, you know, that talks to you, like the Bible says, talks with his fingers to you, you know, in, in traffic. Maybe, maybe the reason why is because, well, that's what the preacher does. That's what the preacher does. I could play you another one. You can play you the one where the preacher said, where the guy calls in and says, that Mark and Michael were lucky that their preacher didn't shoot them? Now, why would he do that? And yet we say, well, you know what? All these, all these policemen getting killed out here, it's a shame that these people are just walking up and killing people. Well, the, Baptist, the man said the Baptist preacher might shoot you. Should I play the one from Calvin Adams where, where he said if he saw any of these members down, there, down at our Bible study, he'd shoot them? What is all with all the violence? <clears throat> You know what's with all the, uh, all the, the, the uh, you know, ruffian and, and uh, rough, rough uh, uh, lifestyle. See how that is? I'm just saying, friends, if the churches of men, if this is how people in the, the so-called churches act, it's no wonder that's how the community acts. That's what that's the example they're seeing. Example they're seeing. Well, let's. Uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, what about one more here? What about church of men and murder? You say, well, James, I, I don't know of anybody that would, that would advocate murder. Well, let's go back to J Jimmy Carter. And I'm using Jimmy Carter because I got this video where he says he talks about both things. And he's a Sunday school teacher. And he's touted as one of the most religious presidents we've ever had. But listen, listen to it. Listen to what he says. Let's go back. We've already heard him say that uh, Jesus would be okay with, with uh, homosexual marriage. And let's listen to what he says about abortion. Let me see if I'll back up just a little bit here. Partners should be able to go to the local courthouse or to a different church and get all right, now let's hear what it says about, about abortion here. Married, that's no problem. I have had a problem with abortion, you know, and this has been a long-time problem of mine. I, I, I have a hard time believing that, that, that Jesus, for instance, yeah. would approve abortions uh, unless it was because of, um, of rape or incest or, or if the mother's life. mother's life was in danger. Now, whoa, 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 stop a minute. What? You have a hard time believing Jesus would be okay with abortion? I, I do too. Unless it's in the case of rape or incest or the mother's life in danger? Now, why? where do you get that? Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, thou shalt not commit abortion unless... Really, friends? But remember, this is from the same Sunday school preacher, teacher, who said, well, I just think Jesus is okay with gay marriage. I don't have a really verse for it. He don't have a verse for anything he's given. And there again is the problem. These church of men, they don't have, they don't have a verse for nearly anything they're given. Now, is it any wonder, friends, that we're in the shape we are? If the Bible is supposed to be the standard, if it's supposed to be the guide for everything we do in life, it's supposed to be the, uh, the, the standard that we're using to, uh, uh, to teach us, you know, right from wrong. It's the standard that we're supposed to be using to, to guide us into uh, to guide us and, and our, our, our direct our steps, Second Peter 1 and verse 3. Peter said that according as the divine uh, power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Is it any wonder that when the preachers and the teachers in these churches of men, when they start getting away from the Bible, that then the pew, the people in the pew, and then the people in society 
started getting away from the principles as well? Can you not see the direct correlation? Can you not see how the further you get away from the Bible and the more you just say, well, I just don't think that really matters? Can you see how that affects society as a whole? Look, if, if, you, if you're going to start justifying murder like abortion because you think Jesus would be okay with it, well, what else are you going to justify? See, it, it, I can see why it would be an easy step to justify what, what uh, uh, President Carter is saying about how he felt about abortion. I can see how it would be an easy step because you don't really care about what God says on other things. I mean, look, I mean, j trying to justify instrumental music, trying to justify, uh, you know, worshiping on Saturday instead of the first day of the week, trying to justify, uh, you know, passing the chicken bucket every time you meet instead of on the first, laying by and store on the first day of the week, as the Bible says. I mean, that's easy to justify. But it's easier than to justify the, the bigger things and the bolder things because you've already moved away. See what I'm saying? Those, you say, those are little things. But once I start trying to justify doing things that are already wrong, it's just a, it's not a big step to get down to things like justifying abortion. It's just, it's just not that difficult. Listen, go ahead and let's listen to what he says. Yeah. So I've, I've had that struggle, but I've, my, my oath of office was to obey the Constitution and, as in, and, and the laws of this country as interpreted by the Supreme Court. So I, I went along with that, but, but that's been the only caveat. So when I was Would in, Jesus approve gay marriage? All right, so the only caveat he had when he was president was he, he struggled with abortion. And he thought it was wrong except in case of, you know, it's, it's wrong, to, it's, it's murder unless... The, the mother's life's in danger, then you can murder the child. And it's wrong to murder that infant unless it was the product of incest or rape. Then you can murder it. You know, murder's okay in those three instances. And then he said, you were saying, I had an oath of office to the Constitution. I had to uphold the Constitution. Well, friends, let's get away from what the Bible says. Let's get away from what the Bible says. And then we don't have to deal with that. But Peter, on the other hand, in Acts chapter 5 and verse 29 said we ought to obey God rather than men. Now, do you see what I'm saying? I'm showing you, friends, that when people, when they stop, stop caring what God says, and when they stop adhering to biblical principles, and they stop listening to what God says as to be their, to be their guide, then you know what they do? They start justifying everything that God is against. And people say, wow, how did we get here? How, how did we get to this spot? How did we get to this place in our society? Oh, that's pretty easy. It's easy to see once you see who has been directing the hearts and the minds of the people away from God. That, that's what we're talking about, friends. We're talking about the churches of men. We're talking about the individuals who should have been if they were careful and, and really loved God like they said, <clears throat> Jesus said, if you, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And the preachers and the teachers who don't really care about this book then just start telling people what they want to hear. And so it's no wonder then that you have guys like Billy Graham who have all these people at these crusades come in and eventually here's Billy Graham going, you don't even have to know Jesus. Now, is that a far fetch? Is it, far, is it a far step for Billy Graham to get to the point where he says, you get to heaven even if you don't know Jesus? When he's gotten away from what God says way back here. I'm just trying to show you, friends, that the problem that our society is, is facing is because the churches of men have not adhered to the word of God like they make people think they do. You hear people all the time say, oh, my, my preacher preaches the Bible. I, 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 he, he follows the Bible. Really? Well, if that's the case, how come you can't find what you do in the Bible? If that's the case, how come you can't find the church you're in in the Bible? How come you can't find what you believe in the Bible like the sinner's prayer you can't find it in the Bible? See, and, and this is what we're getting to. 
Uh, let me listen to this. This is a conversation that took place uh, between uh, Johnny Dyer and Johnny Robertson when Johnny went to ask him about the sinner's prayer. And see, he can't find it. And notice, and listen again to the, uh, uh, or listen to the manners that are being demonstrated here. Try to get this in. Hope I have it. Well, I mean, I have it. Really? Who yeah. say it? Well, I'm just a local preacher in the area. Uh -huh. and Are you saved, Johnny? I'm saved, yes. How do you know you're saved? Well, I looked at the Bible, uh -huh. and I found people in the New Testament after Jesus died who went through a process to be saved, and I did the same thing went they did. Went through a process. Huh? Right, right. Oh, my. I, I actually looked at the scripture that they were told, uh -huh. and then I repeated what they did. Repeated? I repeated what, what they did. What did you repeat? Well, the first thing is I heard the gospel. They had to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Then they were told that they had to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus died and raised uh -huh. from the dead. Uh -huh. Then they ha were told they had to confess that. Uh -huh. How am I doing so far? Pretty good. Okay, they were told they had to repent of their past sins. Sure. All right, and then those same individuals that I'm reading about in the book of Acts, chapter 2, they right. were then told upon repenting they need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. Uh -huh. For the, for the, and they should receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, let me just ask you, do you have the, how do you know you're saved? Or do you say you're saved? I do say I'm saved. You, th you, think, you think you're going to heaven when you die? Absolutely. Oh, you do? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now. All right, let me, wait, wait a minute. I'm asking the question. Okay, fine. I'm asking the question. Okay. Do you have any evidence in your life that you're a Christian? Well, I have the Bible as my evidence. Huh? I have the Bible as the evidence. Is that all you got? Well, what else do I need? Uh -huh. Well, you're missing something. Okay, what is, what is it? What is it? What is it? The witness of the Spirit of God and the evidence that is spelled out, first of all, in the, first, in the book of 1 John, that, that tells in many places there, His Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. The whole, all things have become new. Have you ever experienced that? Okay, now one of those passages. You, I wonder if you have Experience that. One of those do passages. You know anything, yes. Do you know anything about a changed life? Yes, I do. Huh? What yes, do you I do. Change? Do you uh, have any love? For, do you have any love for the brethren? Do you really love yes, the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Are you a false prophet? No. Are you a false prophet? No. Are you one of those who are learning? No. Are ever learning and never coming to the mind? But I tell you this. Is, you, uh, no, this is something talking, that you gave out. I'm didn't talking you? right now. I'm okay. Do you have, are you one of those who's ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth? I, I am learning. I hope you come to the knowledge of the okay. truth. Okay. Can you tell no, me the truth you, of this? Listen, you, this is something you, you handed out. Are you, I hope one day you come to the knowledge of the truth that is in the Scripture, and only the Spirit of God can show you that. I'm not. Listen, I don't did have you, anything to did talk Did you hand this out? I don't have anything. I'm talking now. You, okay. you be quiet a minute. You be this quiet. says, you this be is quiet. a sinner's prayer. You be quiet, you be quiet right here. And listen. Okay. You don't even have the witness of the Spirit of God in your own heart. Though. Yes. I do. You, huh? The, no, the you Spirit of God. Describe, you didn't express. You didn't describe any of that happening to you. You are one of those who's ever learning and never come okay. to the knowledge of the I truth. I did describe the only Spirit. The Spirit of God can show you the truth, and I'm afraid you haven't even. I did. I don't even need to talk to you because I'm afraid you're one of those who will trample underfoot the glorious gospel. Well, you are like give you all not, I want to do. Give you not which is holy unto dogs, neither cast you your pearls before swine. I have talked to a preacher from that church, went into his home to the church. Of Christ on the Ridgeway Road, sit down and talk with him. I know exactly what you got to say. I know what you're all about. All I want to do I is ask even, a question. I don't, even need, I don't even need to answer. Why, why did you put this, listen, why did you put this brochure talk, out? I don't even need to talk to someone. Sinner's prayer. Where I is it? I don't have this discussed because we don't have this in common. I'm afraid you might be one of those who simply, if I give you the, the Word of God, I'm preaching to somebody as, as giving it to the Word. Listen, you already the gave this out. Swine. You gave this you out see, at the I'm afraid I'm giving and I don't have anything to say to you. Where, I know what you teach where is because the I have prayer? talked with a, people, a person from your church there. I've okay. talked with somebody who, I mean, it's the Church of Christ on I the noticed, Ridgeway Road. I noticed and I, 25 and I went, pages. I went over these things with them, and I went over with a man who went to tell you, let me tell you what you were doing. And you are like so bitter, just like that man down that told me, he says, there are people in our own camp who disagree with one another. 
So I don't I'm afraid I'm talking to somebody who's like forgiven Pearl Davy what All right. <clears throat> about our time, but that's Johnny Dyer. He, he was he, he was simply uh, Johnny was trying to get him to give him the sinner's prayer and he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He said, I, I don't have anything to say to you. You don't have anything to say to you. Shut up, I'm talking. You know? Hush, I'm talking to you. I don't have anything to say to you. And so he wouldn't say where the sinner's prayer was. You know why, friends? It's not in there. And so our point is, not to, getting back to the manners as well, how rude that was, but you see what I'm saying? It's no wonder our society is the way it is because this is the example and this is what they're hearing from the people in the pulpit. Friends, the church of men are the problem. And that's why we do what we do. That's why we're always trying to tear them down and destroy them because they're leading people astray and they're hurting our society. Friends, I'm out of time. I've, I've got to wrap up. I'm right at 10 o'clock. So I, I just want to leave you with this thought, friends. The, the only thing that's going to save our country is getting back to what the Bible is saying, getting back to uh, a word from the Lord, and that is going to, what's going to save our country by saving the individuals, by saving the individuals who are, are trying to adhere to it. Friends, we hope that you will come out to the tent September 7, 14th through the 25th. Until next time, remember what does the Bible say, and you always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night.